Uh, we're excited for Brother Jimmy. He gets to go and uh, be a part of all those that were saved uh, in the last week or so out at Miracle Lake. If you heard him tell about that, they were experiencing revival. And I think they had uh, six, seven, eight, somewhere around in there saved. That's wonderful. And uh, they're out there tonight baptizing them. And I told Jimmy, I'd expect you to be there. Uh, you, you were a part. God used you in a lot of that. So we ought to pray more that keeps happening because they have a pretty steady influx of people. And just pray that God will keep using Jimmy. I think that's the man for the job. And I'm, I'm glad he's getting to be there tonight, represent our church, and to send our love and just shout with them. Amen. That's wonderful. Uh, more getting saved. How many of you in here can sew? Needle and thread? Sew. Anybody? Some of y'all look very unsure. <laughs> kind of kind of like the you so. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna admit it, are you? Yeah, two things, two things. But uh, it seems like sewing's a lost start. How many of you had parents who sewed? Yeah. How many of you had grandparents who sewed? How many of you ever wore an outfit that was completely made at a at a sewing machine by your parents? I remember mom would make that stuff, we'd wear it to school and uh, maybe not all the money to go shopping. They just make your own clothes. You have to worry about it. But it seems as years have gone on that uh, that uh, techniques and that art that is that is kind of fallen by the wayside. It's kind of sad, really, to see something that used to be such a big part of day-to-day -day life just kind of going by the wayside. But I wanted to show you tonight a reference in scriptures about the very thing that we are just talking about. Go with me to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter 2, and I want to look at just one verse tonight. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10. I want to preach tonight on being sown by the Savior. Being sown by the Savior. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10. When we find it, if we're able, uh, let's stand together tonight. And this uh, text here, as Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus, he makes a reference in verse 10 to this very thing of sowing or maybe knitting as uh, it's sometimes used in other portions of Scripture. And I thought that uh, we'd look at this tonight because it shows us a great picture of what Jesus has done uh, for you and I. Now Ephesians 2 is talking about um, uh, grace and works. It has those wonderful verses, For by grace are you saved through faith. It is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But tucked away just past that in the 10th verse is where we'll be uh, tonight. Uh, Ephesians 2.10, if you got it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. God, we sure do thank you tonight. You brought us safely back to the church house. We thank you, God, for our time together in Bible study. We thank you for our prayer time together. Help us to always be thankful for that and to make sure we find time to pray for each other and to lift up needs. We thank you, God, that for the singing, uh, the songs we're able to sing together. We thank you that we've still got at least a little sense about us to not push off those old songs but to keep them near to our hearts. And we thank you for the meaning and the power uh, that's found there. And we ask tonight, God, as we read your scriptures that you'll speak to our hearts as only that you can draw us ever closer to Jesus we pray and it's in his name in Jesus name we pray amen you can be seated thank you for standing with me I remember trying to sew because mama would sew and uh, she would make us clothes she'd make shirts and pants and if something tore we got a hole in something you know you'd run take it to mama and she'd patch it up fix it up and even today uh, I get my clothes will get messed up and I'll go to Brandy and she's pretty good with the needle and thread and, and uh, she does a pretty good job at fixing all the seams that seem to They, they say, Tommy, yeah. See, Tommy, you're with me. They just don't make thread like they used to. Well, you ought to be able to wear a pair of pants, you know. But sometimes that old cheap string in the seam just busts loose, don't it? One time, I, uh, one of my uh, teachers at Bible college I went to, he was telling me that he was, <laughs> he was preaching, and he said the church was dead. He said it was ice cold dead, and said he was doing everything he could to get a grunt out of somebody. And he said he just got in his mind. He said he got a little fleshly. He said, I'm going to climb up on top of his pulpit and preach the rest of the message standing up on top of the pulpit. And he reared back, and he went throw his leg up on top. And by the time he got it up there, he said, whoosh, and he heard it cut loose. <laughs> and uh, he... 
pulled his leg back down, and he thought, well, if I stay right here, you know, I'll be all right. He said the piano, which was one side or the other, was one of those pianos that has the mirror. Uh, <laughs> y'all seen those? Uh, they used to make them a lot. They had the pianos that would have the mirror. And he said he preached for a minute, and he, he caught a glimpse of that. He could see his, you know, his drawers were showing, his leg was showing. It just tore the whole backside out of his pants. And uh, he didn't know what to do. And he, about the end of his message, he, he told him to bow his head and to pray. And, and uh, he, uh, there was a door right there at the side. And he made his way out that side door and told the preacher, I, I split my pants, you're going to have to close this out. And he said he was out in his car sitting there just embarrassed, no end. And he said about 30 seconds after he'd gotten his car, he heard laughter erupt from inside the church building. <laughs> that pastor got up and told what he had done. And he said, they come out of the church, they all walk by his car one at a time, says, that's a good message, preacher. <laughs> so he needed somebody who could help him sew his britches up after that. But in, the, in our text tonight in Ephesians, uh, Paul is talking about this very thing. And I want you to see verse 10. He says, for we are his workmanship. Now that word workmanship literally means fabric. And uh, it, it talks about we are his fabric that is created in Christ Jesus. It literally has that idea of sewing or mending a garment together. Um, which is wonderful when we talk about being uh, sewn together and mended with Christ because we take something beautiful and perfect and with all power like Jesus and mend ourselves uh, to him or he mends us to him rather. But uh, to think about it, there's only one problem. If you got your bi uh, Bibles, hold your spot there and turn back to Luke in your uh, Gospels. Luke chapter number 5. Let me show you a problem that I see. If we're going to be sewn in or workmanship created with Jesus, there's a problem. And Jesus was telling parables in the fifth chapter of Luke. Luke chapter 5 and verse 36, he talks about this. Luke 5, 36, he says, or it says rather, and he spake also a parable unto them, no man putteth a piece of new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh the rent, and the peace that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. So Jesus says we can't take new garment that is full of strength and it's, it's new. It's not been worn and faded and tattered. You don't take a new piece and mend it to an old tattered piece because they won't agree with each other. They'll tear apart. They'll rend themselves. They can't. It's like oil and water. It just won't mix. Well, I reckon that's how me and Jesus are. He's a brand new, shiny garment, isn't he? Perfect, brand new, without spot, without blemish. A brand new pair of Levi's, right, buddy? Brand new pair. He's, he is the best there is. I mean, he is perfect. But we're his workmanship, the fabric that's created or sewn into, mended in with him. Well, wouldn't that be then a bright, new, beautiful garment sewn in with what we know as corruption? The Bible says our righteousness is as what? Filthy rags. That's what we are. So would you take a new and mill it with filthy garments? Jesus said, no, you wouldn't do that. What does that mean? That means Jesus has to do something that no other seamstress can do. Jesus has to do something that the best tailor that's ever lived can't do. He's got to take an old, tattered, worn out, busted up, stained, torn garment and make it so where it can be mended or bonded with him. Now look, I believe it talks about that. Let me give you three thoughts tonight from verse number 10. I think the first thing that he's got to do as he creates us, we are his workmanship, we are his fabric, he's got to restore us. He has got to restore us. He has got to bring us back to the place where we're supposed to be in fellowship with God. After all, what's made us that tattered, filthy, worn out, stained garment? Sin has made us that way. Sin has corrupted us. Sin has stained us. How many of you, before you go to church on Sunday, you'd get your Sunday clothes on and go out and get in the mud? And then mom and daddy about half kill you before you get to church. <laughs> you know, uh, I can't say whether or not I've done that or whether or not he did that or whether or not I've done that myself as a father. But when you take something that is new and shiny like we were created to be and it gets the stain on it, it becomes tainted. It becomes tattered. There are some stains that can wash out. There are some stains 
that don't wash out. Somebody tell me some stains that don't wash out. Grape juice. Yeah. What? Baseball. How do you get? Oh, stain. I was about to say. Baseball's on grass. That's where he's going. Grass stained mustard. Blood. Those are things that don't wash out. It's a permanent stain. That's what sin does to this garment. When it enters us, it stains us. And we can wash it with the water of the world. We can wash it with good intentions. We can wash it with works like what verse 9 is talking about. Try to do good things to make this garment look better. But friend, at the end of the day, it's still an old tattered rag. It's still a garment that is stained with sin and it must be restored. But I'm thankful tonight that Jesus can do what no other seamstress or tailor can do. He can take a garment and restore it back again. I remember uh, one time I was working at the, uh, uh, one of the uh, places in Cleveland that cuts the foam for the chair factories. And every day we had orders we had to fill, you know, cushions. And we would take permanent markers and mark the cushions for what day of the week we had made them on. Brown, black, red, blue, and green. Those were the five colors. We, whatever day it was, we had to mark it. And if we got done with Monday's work, we would start Tuesday's work. We had to use Tuesday's color to signify that. So we had to keep most of these markers in our pocket. And I remember one time I had on a pair of khaki shorts, brand new. Brandy had bought them for me, and uh, we were working in there. And I had those markers, the, the caps, kind of laced into my pockets. And apparently the lids were on the uh, the, the marker was exposed the the lid was not on there and I was running those things in and out of my pockets and about halfway through the day I noticed I had brown red and blue marks all over them permanent marker and I thought man <laughs> she's gonna kill me I just got these things and I've ruined them and I went home and I don't know what to this day that she did but she put something on there and washed them and it all come out I was shocked I thought man they look just like, I thought I'd run them. They look just like they did when I bought them. She restored those jeans that I messed up. But friend, let me tell you, as much as I love my wife and as talented as she is, she can't fix what sin's done to me. You cannot fix what sin's done to me. Psychology can't fix what sin's done to me. This world can't restore me, but Jesus can. Oh, I'm old tattered garment, but Jesus not only can restore us, but he can repair us. He can fix the brokenness that is in there. Uh, when, I, when I, from time to time, will loosen the seams on my uh, 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 britches. I'm not going to say where they come loose, but it's under the areas that are under the most stress, <laughs> usually. And I'll go to Brandy, and I'll say, Honey, can you fix this? And she'll say, Yeah. And, and she'll get to pulling out her stuff, and I'll say, Put a little extra, put a little extra loop. <laughs> Make us a little stronger. And she'll get in there, and about the half hour, she'll, I'll hear her poke herself a couple times, and she'll say, I wish you'd quit doing this. <laughs> and she'll, but in a minute, she'll say, all right, and I'll go in there and get them, and, and there they are. You know, they're just repaired. They're right back like they were. And, and I believe she's worked on this particular pair of pants two or three times, and, and uh, they might be another one coming up right here. But... Uh, but she's able to repair them, and then I'm able to go on. She's even made repairs on me here at the church. One day I was here, busted a seam sitting right there uh, in the britches of my pants. I went back there, and we had an emergency. But luckily, my wife was prepared, and we safety pinned myself together and got through uh, the church service. Be able to make repairs. But doesn't God in such a grander way repair us? Doesn't it in such a grander way repair the broken pieces? Take what of us has been stretched and pulled and busted and, and just tattered. And you ever, you ever got a tear that's not in the seam? You just about have to give up on that. I've done that. You know, you do something and you'll tear portions that ain't meant to be sewed together uh, easily. You can't repair those. But aren't you glad Jesus can take what the world can't fix and he can make it better again? He takes the broken and he makes it better again. Not only does he restore us, not only does he repair us, but this is the best part. He'll reuse us. He'll reuse us. You remember Saul when he was yet breathing out threats? against the disciples of Christ. He got orders or warrants, if you will, to go and arrest the disciples, to arrest anybody who was preaching in Jesus' name. 
Uh, Saul himself said, man, I was chiefest of sinners. I was a bad dude, bad monkey, uh, as Ron says. I was the worst. I was a miserable human being. If I caught somebody preaching Jesus, I made it my point to ruin their life. And if I could, I killed them. I stood by and said, boys, let me hold your coats. You have your way with Stephen. Saul was a bad, bad man. You know what he needed? He needed Jesus. <laughs> you know what Jesus did for him? He restored him. You know what Jesus did for him? He repaired him. You know what Jesus did for him? He reused him. He said, Saul, go to Ananias' house, and you'll get orders from there. He goes, and he finds out he got a whole new mission now. No longer is he persecuting the church. He is now building the church. He's no longer now arresting and trying and convicting and killing Christians. He's now making disciples and raising up young preachers and teaching them the Word of God. He, Jesus, took what was useless and made it useful. Folks, without Jesus, we're useless. Without Jesus, we're an old tattered garment that don't agree with that new. Why in the world should we be sewed in with such a beautiful thing like Christ? We shouldn't be. But when Jesus restores us, when Jesus repairs us, then he can reuse us. And he'll use us. Why? Because we're good? No, because he's good. Because he's Jesus. And he's done in me what needs to be done. Not that I can go out here and be somebody. That's what he says. Look again here. In verse uh, uh, 10, for we are his workmanship created, notice this, in Christ Jesus unto good works. Why has he restored us? Why has he repaired us? What does he want to reuse us for? For good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. He wants us to do his will. He wants us to follow his word. He wants us to do his work. That's why he's reusing us. Aren't you glad God can take somebody who used to serve the devil and now let them serve him? Have you ever seen that before? I went to school with some boys who I thought would be dead by now. I'm just being honest. I mean, y'all remember when you're teenagers, boy, you live, you live like you're indestructible, you know, doing the craziest things you can find, and, and you just you live crazy. And there were some of them boys that lived crazier than I ever dreamed of living. And you just are convinced these boys ain't going to live long. You know, they're crazy. And would you know that I still see a few of them from time to time. And I've seen several of those boys who God's called into ministry. And I thought they was picking on me when I saw them. I thought they was aggravating me because I was in the ministry. <laughs> Come to find out God had gloriously and wonderfully saved them. God had found them and, and restored them. He had repaired them, and now he was reusing them. No longer were they out there being the poster child for satanic living. Now they were out there preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. God can take us and make us into a vessel that he can use. And I'll tell you, he can take the most messed up of us and use us. Jeremiah said, I went to the potter's house, and behold, a work wrought on the wheel, how it was marred in the hands of the potter. But then he watched that potter slowly take his instruments, his hands, water, apply pressure where pressure was needed, guide where guidance was needed, and then take that marred vessel and turn it in to a beautiful thing. Friend, that's what we are. We are vessels on the wheel of the potter. And God, and, and through Christ, is making us more like he wants us to be. He is restoring us. He is repairing us. And he will reuse us. We are his workmanship. His fabric. You ever thought, though, when you take two pieces of fabric, they just don't stick together, do they? How you get them to stick together? They've got to be sewn. There's got to be a tie, if you will, that binds a thread. What is that? It's the love of Christ. It's the grace of Christ. It's the blood of Jesus woven in through my life, binding me to him forever. There's a beautiful story in the Old Testament of Jonathan and David. When Jonathan and David got to know each other, they became so close it said their souls were knit together. They were brothers. They were so close that they were almost one person. They thought alike. They acted alike. They did everything the same. They were the best of friends. In a much more grander way, I have been knit 
into the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm his fabric. I'm his workmanship. And he has bound me with his cords of love, his cords of grace and mercy and the blood of his son. He has woven me in to Jesus. And what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You know what that tells me? I have been created in Christ. And nothing will ever change that. I have been bonded to him. Why? To do his will. To do his work. Am I worthy? No. You're not either. Oh, you see, you got to remember what we are. We're just old tattered rags. But in the hands of Jesus, he's restored us. He's repaired us. And he will reuse us. Don't go around thinking. God's not going to use you. You know any people I talk to? Well, I've lived a hard life. I just don't know if God would use me, if God could use me. Sometimes I kind of think I'd like to sing, maybe sing a song at the church. But every time I do, I just, I I think about how mean I was or how bad I used to live, and I just can't do it. You know what that is? That's a devil. That's a devil. That's not God. In Christ, the Bible says, you are made a what? A new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? Now, if he's that new bright shining garment, there's only one type that's going to attach to Jesus. Something else that's new. How then are we going to be made new? Through the precious blood of Christ. Therefore, now I am a new creature. And I am knit forever with Jesus. Nothing's ever going to sever that. I can't sever it. He won't sever it. Nothing ever will. And folks, because of that, I'm going to go on. Because of that, I'm going to press on for Jesus. Go on. Tell somebody else about Jesus and understand something. At the end of the way, I'm going to mess up. I'm going to stumble. I'm going to trip and fall. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to have bad days. I might have a bad week. I might have a bad month. I may even have years where it's just not good. But at the end of the day, he has knit me to himself. He has bonded me. I am his workmanship, it says. We are his workmanship, created in Christ unto good works. Who did it? God did it. I didn't do it. So therefore, I'm going to walk as God would have me to walk. Walk in those good works and do what he's called me to do. How about you? Will you do that? Are you a new creature tonight? Are you a new garment? Have you been made new? Hope you have. But if you're still in that old garment, if you will, if you're still in those tattered rags of sin, if those stains and those cuts and those wounds of sin are still there and you're just trying your best to get through day by day, can I tell you, it won't work. You better come to Jesus. You better come to Jesus and realize that you are lost. And without Jesus, there's no hope. But in Him, He'll restore you. He'll repair you. And He'll reuse you. Let's stand together all around the church tonight. As we stand, if we're able to stand.